welcome to the Alain Guillot podcast, where we speak about personal finance and entrepreneurship. This is episode number 72. Today we have with us for the second time Jay Money from the website Budgets Are Sexy. Now, Jay Money was with us a long time ago, about a year ago, on episode number 11. And now he comes back to give us a recap of what has been going on in his life for the past 12 months. So today we speak a little bit about the business of blogging, how bloggers make a living. Also, how he keeps his content fresh. He's been blogging for 11 years already, and his content is always fresh and relevant. So how he does it? Finally, he is a stay-at-home dad with three kids running around him. So how he managed to, to make it all work, to have his kids working and climbing on his shoulders while he's trying to blog. We also speak about... How does it feel to be a borderline millionaire? Jay Money has been posting his uh, income or his net worth every month for the past 11 years, and now he's right there at the borderline of hitting that $1 million. How does it feel like to be there that close? And the last thing is, why did he dump his overpriced iPhone for an Android and how now he's saving thousands of dollars? So let's listen to the interview. Jay Money, thank you for joining us. Yeah, man, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me. I guess I didn't scare you off last time. No, you didn't. You bought a lot of <laughs> all the visitors that you brought to my website scare me. I mean, I say, what the hell is going on? <laughs> all these people are coming to check out my website. Yeah, man, I only do a few podcasts a year, so I share whenever I'm on them, you know. And I, and I remember it being fun last time, so we'll see if we can repeat the fun. Okay, so yes, so you trusted me when I was just beginning my podcast. You were my podcast number 11. I'm full of gratitude and, and uh, yes, for you to trust in this new blogger and podcasting podcaster. And of course, it was a big success. People, I think people in my community already know who you are, but the fact that we, you and I had this conversation was a great hit. So thank you so much for that. Oh, yeah, dude. What, 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 how far is the podcast now? Because it was over a year since we talked what what number are you up to i am in numbers you are I think uh you will be podcast number 70 so oh, you are going hey. from 11 to it's 70 <laughs> well one per week uh, i took one month off i got a little bit burned out by the discipline it's been with this one it will be about podcast number 70 God, man. Congratulations. I only lasted like 20 episodes until I bailed out of my podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're three times yeah. better than me already. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's more work than I anticipated. But, <laughs> you know, the ability to talk to people, having the excuse to talk to people that I follow and that I admire and that I, will, I want to learn something from them, the podcast give me that vehicle. You know, it's much better than writing an email and, and say, hey, Jay Money, tell me all your uh, blogging secrets. You yeah, know, you say, you will say totally. screw, screw you. But then if I say, Jay, Jay Money, let's have a podcast together, then you say, okay, maybe Wednesday <laughs> at 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is, a, that is the magic of podcasting. So, uh, Jay Money, for, for the listeners who didn't listen to podcast number 11, can you tell us one more time, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, sure. So I started my blog, BudgetsAreSexy.com, in 2008, over 11 years ago. Um, just started talking about money and having fun and writing a diary, which pretty much is the same as it is now. Um, no idea really could make a living off of it or it would go on to change my life and friends and mindset. Um, I just like talking about money and reading about money, particularly people's you know financial numbers and net worth, You know, seeing that in real life. Um, really resonated with me because you don't see that in, in real life. Um, and so um, and so I just started reading other blogs and I said, oh, I'm going to just start my own blog. And, you know, here we are 11 years later and I've started and, and sold other projects along the way, but this has always been my baby. Um, and I'm actually back to blogging daily, Monday through Friday, like I did back in the beginning. So it's fun to, I feel like I'm back to blogging in the beginning again. It's, it's nice. 
Well, the one thing that is remarkable about your blog is that your blog is only a vehicle for you to connect with other people. I think you are big into the blogging sphere. You 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 have the discipline to do it every day as you just uh, share with the community. But even bigger is that you are constantly reaching out. I see you in Twitter and I see you reaching out and, and sharing other people's stuff. And, and so that's how, even though you have been blogging for 11 years i think i found out about you in year number one and it's because you were doing this outreach with everyone connecting with people and trying always to be helpful i remember in the past i have asked you one or two questions about blogging or about personal finance and you know a lot of people just don't answer because they get overwhelmed with the amount of messages that you they get but i know that every time that i have written to you you have answered my message and not only uh, one or two words like yes or no you know you have written full paragraph give, helping me out so I'm, I'm sure you have done that with many other people so in the name of all the other bloggers that you have helped out i said thank you man hey thank you yeah i mean for me it's the community you know like i never started a blog to make money or um, any of that stuff i just did it because i enjoyed it and really i just like talking a lot about it with other people um, doesn't matter if you're a blogger, big or small, or just a, a reader, you know, and so the community aspect's big, you know, and unfortunately the community part of it doesn't pay and it takes up all the time, you know, <laughs> but that's the part that I love, um, you know, and that's really the only way I'm still doing it all these years later is because this is the community and, and my readers, right? Without readers, you don't have a blog, you know, that's, that's important. So, you know, they've kept me alive and it's been a fun ride. Well, there are two things that uh, fill us with happiness. First of all, is having enough money to pay for our food and rent and all this and that. Yep. But the other thing is just that, the community and a sense of accomplishment to be among a, a group of people who share the same idea. So, you know, I know that it doesn't pay the bills to answer all those emails, but you, every time you get a, a, a comment or something, I know that it motivates you to continue going. Totally, yeah, totally. Especially the comments, like I got something yesterday from a person that just paid off all of her debt, like $300,000. And she, it was wow. no like, hello or anything. It was just like, my debt's paid off. This is so awesome. And she just wanted to like talk to someone about it, you know? It was awesome. I never talked to her in my life. And she just sent me this email about it. You know, so you do hear cool stories like that. It, it does motivate you. Yeah, perfect. So can you one more time tell us how is it that you took that first step to get into blogging? Because I, I know your story, you you had debts, you had problems, and then all of a sudden you decide to start a blog and then you go full in, you know, blogging, I don't know how many times per day or something like that. So can you share that beginner story one more time? Yeah, so it really started when I bought a house back when the financial crisis stuff was going on. Um, and I bought a house with no money down, no budget, I mean, nothing, you know, 350 or 60,000 around there, um, you know, just on a whim, basically. Um, I said, well, I probably should pay attention to more of this stuff. And I'd never been really bad with money, but I'd never been good. I was just kind of in the middle, going with the flow. Um, and I was about 27 or 26 around there. Um, anyways, I went online and I started, you know, I typed in probably how to budget or something like that. And I kept coming across blogs of people, you know, real life, normal people, not companies, you know, talking about their story and what they did and the good stuff and the bad stuff. And I just, I don't know, it just sucked me in. Um, and I thought, well, I could blog about my, you know, my journey, you know, and I wasn't a writer or journalist or anything. And I had misspellings all over the place, grammatical errors, even to this day. You know, and I talk about saving money going to the bars, you know, or going to New Orleans for like a weekend or, you know, whatever. Like, oh, it's typical bachelor stuff in the beginning, you know, but I think talking normal and real, you know, I'd curse every now and then. And um, and I do a lot of stupid stuff, too. And I think being a real person online, like people resonate with that, you know, and a lot of people either, especially in the beginning, either loved my style or hated my style. But I just kept being myself, you know, now, 10 years later, of course. You know, I'm a different person, I'm a father, I'm married, so I don't do all the crazy stuff I used to do. But but that's really what got it started, and people, you know, were listening, and then I had some news outlets say, hey, we like your stuff, but, you know, you curse too much, and you, you can't spell anything. You know, if you can clean it up a little bit, we'll reshare it, you know, and, and re repurpose some of your stuff. Um, and so that kind of really kicked it off and gave me a bigger audience. And then from there, um, I've been doing it for about a year and a half. 
and, and I started to make some money, maybe a hundred, 200 a month. Um, I think I got up to 500 a month. And then my current job, I was doing it on the side, blogging every day, Monday through Friday. That was my goal. I knew as long as I got one blog post out a day, that that would you know, keep me consistent and the people would know when to read. And then um, my current job at the time basically fired me. And I thought, oh boy, like this is my chance to be a full-time blogger, right? Like technically I was, because I didn't have a job. Right. Um, and my wife got a little nervous and she said, well, hey, try it out for a few months. And you know, if it doesn't work out in three months, start applying again. I said, all right, you know, and I've, I've never applied again. <laughs> don't, don't wow, bad. wow. Yeah, so. You know, sometimes when I when uh, I hear friends of mine quitting their job or getting fired, the first thing that I say to them is congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this so, is yeah, the start if you want. If you want a fresh start, it's a perfect opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so you just mentioned that when you started or a few years into it, you were starting making a little bit of money. How does a blog make money? Yeah, so there's a lot of ways. Um, you know, the high level, there's ads, you know, display ads that you see when you go to the website. Um, there's affiliate stuff, which is big, which is like, hey, I use this product. I love this product, you know, and, and if you blog about it and your people sign up to it, then you get paid a, a commission. There's sponsored posts that lots of people do. You know, you can write about a product, an article about it, and, and people will pay for that. You know, and obviously all this stuff is some, you know, stuff you, you make a point to, to point out that it is, you know, a paid thing. You don't just slip it in there kind of thing. And then there's other opportunities, too, on the outside. Like I know friends, and you do too, financial bloggers that went on to do speaking, you know, engagements, getting paid five, ten thousand 10000 a pop to, to speak at conferences, right? Um, or publish books. There's so many new, you know, book, you know, book publishers now out there that started out as a blog um, and they just took off. Right. So now they have book deals. Um, and then there's freelance writing, too. And, and most I would say the majority of blogs, like ninety nine point five percent of all blogs, like make nothing. Maybe they make enough to cover the hosting and stuff. Um, but most of their opportunities come from, you know, getting the word out there of their skills, of their personality, of their writing, of the stuff they like you know, are good at, and then they use that to leverage kind of like a resume and to get right. other deals. So there's some people that have a blog to make nothing on the blog, but they make a hundred thousand a year freelancing. Yeah. yeah. The exposure, people know about them and they get more. Uh... Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you, uh, have you, are you a one man operation? Like you mentioned, you had a lot of spelling mistakes and, uh, and <laughs> this and do, that. Yeah. So, so are you, 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 do you have some help? Like I know I have friends who, who sometimes correct my grammar. Uh, English is not my first language. So sometimes I got friends that say, Hey man, let me help you out. Right, <laughs> and, and, right, right. Um, yeah, no, it's pretty much been me for the most part. Like I do all the writing, editing, at least initially, you know, ideas, you know, invoicing, I mean, technical, like most of the stuff for most of the 11 years I've done myself every now and then I've partnered up with people. Like a couple of years ago, I partnered up, um, with someone on budgets are sexy to help me with the tech side of things. So if the site ever goes down, I ping them and they can get it up, you know, running or something wonky or if it gets, you know, spammed or whatever, I, I tap them. Um, and then recently a friend that actually read the blog, Len, like would say, hey, I hope you don't mind, but I, you know, I'm a proofreader at heart and I keep finding errors on your site. You know, if it helps you, I'll just pass them over to you. And I'm like, yes, please. You know, so I hear from him every single week. <laughs> about all nice, the nice, nice. So that's nice, right? And he's starting to build up. Actually, here's a perfect example. That's how we became friends. And then he started, um, you know, saying, hey, can I use you as a reference because I want to do freelance proof editing, right? Right. And now he has all these clients making good money. All be, and they say, hey, I, I, I proofread budgets for sexy stuff. He used that, you know, that was for free. But he went on to, um, you know, do that kind of stuff. Um, and so anyways, yeah, I think in the beginning, it's good to do everything yourself so you get a good idea of everything, the stuff you like, that you don't like, you're good at, bad at, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then as you get going, if it sticks, you know, I mean, there's some people that, you know, freelance out everything, even the writing, like some blogs, my friends don't even blog anymore. They just, it's all, I mean, I guess it's turned into a business kind of, it's just pure, you know, business. So there's a writer, there's editor, there's monetization, you know, and 
that's a different way of going with blogging. Mine's very personal and very, you know, um, kind of like hobbyish. That just happens. Yeah, yeah. And we can see your personality in each blog. So yeah, that's... and that's the thing to start out. Like, I, I for the most part, if people are starting a blog, like you want to know why. If you're doing it to hold yourself accountable or for fun and passion, like there's a certain way you go about it. If you're in it purely for the money, there's another way, and they're two drastically different ways, and they look differently. Right. Right. Two different, you know, if it's a business, you have to treat it as a business and that's a whole other thing. Right. You're not doing it for the community. You're doing it for, for money. Right. And so it's, it's just different. You know, good. Right. So whenever it's a, a blog for business, I can see these generic articles yep. that it, it doesn't really apply to any one person in particular. It's just like five tips to do this that's and right. five other ways to do the other thing. While you blog post, it's uh, you're sharing your life experience and, 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 and we can see the way that you speak in each one of your blog posts. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. I'm glad it's showing. Um, but, but, you know, that's true. So I'm writing for an audience of people, you know, right? Like I, I, I care about people reading it and being helped or, or engaging in community. Um, versus the money part and and the other way the reason the others are more generic and you'll see a lot of blogs that all look the same like you couldn't even tell who who the writer is or you couldn't tell who owns it or even the personality because it's designed to be generic because that is better for search engines it's better for for making money it's better right. to grow a site and sell a site right like if i try to sell my site you know like i am the site like if j money goes away like what what happens it's just different right so that's the con of it you know If I ever did want to sell one day, it's tricky. Okay, but uh, in our days, okay, so you started 11 years ago, and you developed a community, you got some traction, people know you, you have been in hundreds of podcasts and guest posts and everything, but, you know, nowadays we have a whole bunch of platforms, we have uh, LinkedIn, we have uh, Instagram, YouTube, and, and I don't know how many other platforms there are, so for a person considering to get into the field of personal finance and sharing their ideas and thoughts with an audience. Do you think blogging is still viable or maybe they should go LinkedIn or maybe <laughs> they should go Instagram? What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like my thought is whatever like gets you to do it and that excites you, right? Like for me, the only thing there was was blogging. There was no Twitter. I think Facebook was around, you know, it was a lot different back then. Um, but nothing, no video stuff, no Instagram, no Pinterest, none of that stuff. Um, so we didn't really have any options. That was like, quote, social media. Um, and then when Twitter came around, that that I fell in love with. I just love, you know, how you can connect to people. It's short. It's fun. Um, so for me, the two things I've done, even to this day, is just basically blog and, and tweet. Um, and I'm on Facebook and Pinterest and I think even Instagram here and there. But But for me, at least it works as whatever, you know, excites me and whatever I use naturally, I just pour my efforts in there. So I don't have so for, a big audience in other places and my biggest audience is the blog and, and social media and Twitter. Right. But for a new person then it will be whatever fits their personality. If a person yeah. is good on camera then YouTube will be perfect. If person likes to take a lot of photos and write long uh, Instagram posts, then that perhaps that will be their medium. Yeah, yeah. And again, it goes back to why you're doing it and what you're trying to get out of it, right? Like, right. you know, the problem with social media is you don't own anything. Facebook, t Twitter, all these places, they can kick you off and, and all your stuff is owned by them. It's not owned by you, you know? So if you're, if you're going to go the business route, right, you use it for marketing, but you want to siphon everyone to your own platform that you own and control. Um, and so I love Twitter and I, and every now and then I'll get on others, but at the end of the day, the most important one to me is, is, is my blog because, you know, I own that and that's where, you know, you know, I get people to sign up to my emails and that is where the, the income generates. So that those are important questions. Um, so usually for me, I guess my, my, my tip would be to have one quote, like landing page, like one page that's your home base. Right. Like a perfect world, no matter what marketing, whatever happens, you want everyone funneled through that one page or that one website. And then you capture everyone there, whether it's email, whether it's, you know, whatever it is that you have on your site, whatever you want them to do. But you want everyone pointing all to the one spot, right, that you own and you control. And then how you get them there is kind of the social media stuff, right? Right. Uh, but you do have people that just do YouTube and make millions of dollars and has, you know, crazy millions of followers. 
right? Same with Instagram and same with Twitter and everything else. So that is viable. You know, if that's the route you want to go and it excites you, maybe you experiment. Um, but I think even going back to like, you know, opportunities and stuff, like your resume, you kind of want to have control of that um, in a perfect world. Okay, so you just mentioned a minute ago that you are back into blogging five times per day. Now, per as far as I understand, personal finance, you have three levels. You have the level of you earn a little bit of money, then you have the level of spending money, and then if you are in debt, you pay off your debt. If you are if you are have more money than debt, then you invest that money. So I see personal finance with all these four options, yet you write a blog post every day. How do you keep your ideas fresh? How, how do you continue coming up with new topics? Because it's already been 11 years, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many, only so many ways that you can talk about the same three, four topics. Yeah, I know. It's tricky. I mean, I have my, even today I was writing, I just sat there looking at my computer. I'm like, I'm out of ideas, right? And I have an idea list. And what helps a lot being so engaged with people is every day on Twitter or email, there's always some nuggets there that I can rip off of, you know, um, right. or someone says, Hey, I read this article. I know it's five years old, you know, but I liked it. Or they asked me a question about it. And my first thought is like, awesome. Maybe I can revive that blog post, right. Or edit it. Or maybe I'm different now than that blog post. Like someone uh, the other day came across something that was like seven years old. And I was like, Oh, what has changed in seven years when I first wrote that, you know? And so then I can like write an article based on that and reference the old one, but it's all new stuff. Um, so a lot of that stuff, and again, because I'm so diary focused, like literally anything in my life that's going on, usually there's some way to connect it to money, you know, or even like I'm into like minimalist stuff, cluttering stuff that's not necessarily money, but it's still right. kind of into this lifestyle. Um, and so I can always kind of go that angle. So it's, it's still like the same people more or less would appreciate it, but it's not like dead hardcore, like personal finance. You know, and, and honestly, like even from the beginning, like I'll look at some of my original stuff, you know, and I'm always talking about making a lot of money and becoming a millionaire, right? It's very money focused. And right. now, like if I look back and there is always money there, but I noticed that like my way of thinking and writing is more about like, what does that mean in the grand scheme? It's not like my bank account, which I don't like once I hit on a four or 500,000 in net worth, like my, my level of happiness hasn't really grown and now I'm double that. Right? right. But my lifestyle, you know, like I'm a stay at home dad for the most part now. Right. I work a few hours a day. Um, so my lifestyle has dramatically changed. And that was because of money. Right. Um, and so I catch myself going that route a lot more, which which also opens up a lot of doors for writing stuff that's not, you know, exactly finance related. Yeah. Oh, and and it, it, with all fairness, it, when you started, you probably were completely broke. You were in debt. So it's almost like if. If you lack oxygen, you know, there's no, you don't think about anything other than having some oxygen to breathe. But once you have some oxygen, then you can start thinking about other things. In your case, when you started blogging, you were dead broke. So, of course, money was a big part of you needed money to pay your rent, to buy for food, to, to, to do whatever it is that you were doing. So it had a bigger importance uh, uh, in your life than now. Now you, you have a, a house or you, you, you know, you have, you are more or less established. So you can focus Focus more on your happiness, on your kid, on your wife, on your everyday routine. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's normal. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, and sometimes like, in a weird way, blogging wise, right, like you, you also tend to have, at least for me, my audience has changed over the years. And I really like being in the beginning like a normal Joe Schmo, right? Like I'm going out drinking beers. I have debts. I'm trying to do this, right? I'm trying to be scrappy. I'm trying to figure it out. That was a lot of fun to like have all these light bulbs and be around other people that were also around the same level, you know? And now over the years, because I've paid attention, right? Which makes sense. I'll pay attention. I'm, I'm trying to be better. My net worth has grown. Um, you know, I kind of lose, like there's people that are emailing me and like, dude, like I can't, I don't even have like a dollar to my name. I can't even relate to your stuff. Right. right. And that saddens me. And I, cause I try to keep it open and motivating and, you know, but, but the reality is, Once you, you get going, like, you know, you lose the people that you initially related to, right? Um, but on the flip side, I have people that have been, like you, right? You've been following for a while. 
your story and your net worth and stuff is a lot different than it was 10 years ago. Right. You know? And right. so some people, like I have people that I started reading in high school and they've graduated high school, graduated college, and now have a family and kids. And they've been following the whole time because we just happen to be around the same ages, you know? And so that part's really cool about it. Um, but yeah, but going back to your point, you're right. People are in different phases. Um, and that's why, too, I'll talk about, like, getting out of debt, even though I don't have debt now. Or I'll talk about, like, you know, intro level kind of stuff. Um, A, because that relates to more people. And that is, like, the, on average, the most um, engagement that I get. But also, that's the stuff that I know the most of. Like, I'm not an expert, you know, and most, most financial bloggers, like, we don't have degrees in finance. You know, like, no, like, I don't actually, I don't even think I know one person that has a degree in finance, you know, and but we all have like stuff we were passionate about or stuff that we know more about, you know, but most of us aren't like experts in everything. Okay, so let me yeah. let me clarify that I I do have a degree in finance, and okay, you know what? Well, you're my I, I, I I I I work as a financial advisor, and that's that's the thing that turned me off because my job as a financial advisor was to sell all those crappy mutual funds that we tell in our blog post not to buy. You know, so I was selling those mutual funds with three uh, percent management uh, oh, expense man. ratio. Uh, and you know, every time I made a sale, my my boss congratulated me, and I fell sick to my stomach. So, <laughs> so yeah, I did uh, I did uh, the financing as a profession, and it didn't work out for me because it doesn't feel good, you know. And and some people, well, they they manage to become immune to that, and they they develop a different personality in a way that they don't. Long, they no longer realize that they are selling crappy products, and and they get they block that out of their mindset, uh, and and they are able to go out and make phone calls and and meet clients and get them to invest in this this uh, high expense mutual funds when they know that there are other alternatives. But I couldn't do that. I couldn't block that out of my head, and and yes, I I just stopped uh, working in finance because of that. Ah, well, congratulations. Good job being, being one of us now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me ask you, uh, Jimoni. Uh, so you you blog seven days a week, I mean, five days a week, yep. and you have a kid, you're a stay, you stay-at-home dad. Can you share with us your routine? Because, uh, you know, certainly I, I know that you must have a routine to get so much done. Yeah, yeah, and I actually have three kids now, including a baby. Wow. Definitely You've been me busy. For a loop. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, no, so something I realized a few years ago, especially when I had babies, was that like uh, you have to kind of sneak your time in there. Uh, and for the most part, the only time that I, I can count on until they wake up is when they're sleeping. Um, and so a few years ago, I tried waking up at 5 a.m. when the whole entire house was dead, you know, dead asleep. Um, and so that's like the number one thing. I wake up, you know, sometimes 5 if I sleep in 5.30. And for about two hours straight, for the most part, I have solid time to myself. And so I knock out a lot of correspondence in the morning. I'll start writing blog posts. Um, and then for about an hour, there's a mad rush of um, getting, you know, one of my kids goes to first grade. So they're in public school. Um, one kid goes to preschool for a couple hours. And then one does a nanny share for a couple hours. Um, so there's about a two hour window um, that I drop them all off. And then I go to a coffee shop and, and write my articles. Um, and wrap up and then I pick them all up and then for the rest of the day it's me being daddy until uh, my wife comes home and sometimes I'll finish up work but my whole goal actually I think I'm on month number either 20 or 21 months now I realized that I was working nights still and working weekends um, and I wanted to see what would happen if I just stopped right like all I didn't right. want to think about work all the time especially with the, a new baby um, and so I made it a goal to not work the weekends. And it's been 20 months without opening the laptop one time on the weekends, which is huge for me. Um, and, and magically, because I know I don't have the weekends, I'm more efficient during the work week. Because if once Friday comes, I can't open it up. So I'm forced to do what I need to do before you know the weekend comes, right? And being online and Twitter and social media and all this stuff, I mean, that's like crazy, right? Because everyone is on all the time. And so right. and all your friends are on and all your hustler stuff is going on, you know, so you really have to prioritize, you know, for me, I prioritize my life over, you know, over the business. Right. 
Um, but magically, I get my stuff done, you know, and so you can have it both ways. But yeah, you're right. There is a schedule. And, and waking up early for a couple hours is definitely the number one thing I've done to, to really help me get here. Well, I remember one time I was suffering of insomnia and I just opened my Twitter and there you were posting something at five something in the morning. <laughs> and I said, this dude is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I'm always on, but I'm not. <laughs> okay, so uh, in your blog, you have this very popular part, which is when you share your net worth. Uh, so two questions. First of all, how did that got started? And secondly, do you remember your net worth the first time that you share it? <clears throat> yes. Uh, so it started. So one of the first blogs I read was called mymoneyblog.com. It's still there by name, a guy named Jonathan. <clears throat> and he used to share his net worth every month. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I've never seen this in my life. And I was just addicted to it. I just loved watching it, right? It was just cool to see someone else's money because, again, no one talks about it, you know, in real life. Um, so I so I thought, well, if I ever start a blog, that's going to be like one of the first things I do. And I did. I started it a few months later. And, um, you know, and that was one of the first blog posts I ever did. And at the time, uh, my my net worth, I think, was around 50,000 because I've been or it must have been a couple of years until I started the blog because I didn't have my stuff together yet. Um And then when I did my first blog, my first net worth post, I think it was around 48 or 45,000. Um, and a lot of that was 401k because um, my job at the time had, I mean, they had crazy matching. They matched 100% of 100% that you put in to the legal. Wow. Board. So, so I good. maxed it to 16,500 or whatever it was and got another 16,500. And I lived off like $20 or $90 paychecks for a little bit. It was crazy. Um, and then it was home equity at the time I'd owned a home, um, and I was counting home equity in my net worth. Um, so that was 11 years ago. And then the last report I just did last month was 930 or 920 something thousand. Yeah. You are close to a million, man. How, yeah, how does it feel? <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't feel any different, you know? <laughs> I mean, it is exciting. Like, I just want to see if I can do it. Like that's really okay. just a personal challenge. But again, once I hit 400 ish thousand, like it was, it was no really quality of life. I mean, I, I feel more stable, you know. I feel smarter, but honestly, I haven't done anything different in 10 years. I've just been doing the same thing. And the market right. has been, you know, to our favor, right? Like I just make sure not to get in that much debt, put money in, in investments and retirement accounts. You know, and that's it. It's literally all I've done for 10 years. <laughs> you know, there's this guy, uh, uh, he's a blogger from Canada, and his blog is Million Dollar Journey. Okay. And I remember he used to, he, and well, he still blogs very often, but once he reached that million dollar, then he didn't share any more of his uh, net worth. Oh, really? Uh, that was, so he that was it. And then he stopped? Yeah, he stopped sharing it. Uh, he he didn't yeah. want to share it anymore. That's so. funny. That's what my wife actually every every few months she's like, when we cross that, like, when are you going to stop? It's making her really nervous now. I think because we have yeah. kids and there's like psychos online, um, you know. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm definitely going until I hit a million, but I don't. I have to make sure my wife is okay after that. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, you can join the club of the millionaires, and you don't have to give any more details after that. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. I, I personally want to because I think it's fascinating. It is fun. So uh, so your goal is, uh, is well, I know that you do it because it's fun for you, but also uh, one of your goals must be to be financial independent. I don't know if at this point you consider yourself financial independent or not. Uh, but, but then if not, then at what point do you consider yourself financial independent? Um, so I think the last time I ran the numbers, which I think was like six or seven months ago, it was around 1.7 million. Um, if I had that much invested, like I think we'd have enough to live off of, um, you know, but things keep changing, right? Like when I first ran the numbers, I had one kid, you know, right. I was renting, you know, and then I bought a home and then we had two kids and, you know, now we're up to three kids. Um, on the flip side, I was the sole breadwinner of our family for, you know, for five or six, seven years, my wife was in grad school. Um, and now she's done with grad school and she's starting her career. And I'm like, Ooh, like if you're earning money, then I can earn less and kind of step back. Um, okay. You know, and so I'm going in the opposite direction and she's going upwards. 
um, you know, but so that changes things. But but at any rate, I think around 1.7, um, we'd technically be financially free. Um, you know, I feel like I'm financially free, but I still need the money. Like I'm doing what right. I would do more or less, even if I was free, you know. And so I think that's the, the takeaway. And I think that's the part a lot of people miss, especially new people to the, the scene, you know, when the fire movement came out. You know, and people are like what? Like you can retire when you're 25, and you know, 600,000 banked or whatever. You know, I think the thing that people miss out is like you can still work and you can still earn money if you want. Right. To, but you can do whatever the hell you want. Like you can or not. You know, it's just totally up to you. But like you have that freedom to choose. Right. I think that's right. the part that a lot of people kind of you know get funky about. Um, you know, so even if I was free talking to you right now, I'd still be doing something, right? You know, most people that find out how to be you know financially free they're not sitting around you know doing nothing all day right like well some people are but no, but yeah, no, no. Sure, but not many people yeah right. they're always working on something even if it's a passion project right um, you know so but yeah 1.7 million is the number to answer your question okay okay well if you continue sharing it i will uh, i will continue watching how fast <laughs> or how far you go but you know like okay so let's say you reach this uh, this um uh, 1 million dollars let's say and yes uh just by doing nothing if you just wait eight years with the compounding effect <laughs> you, you know you should be there uh, in, in no time even if you don't earn any more money because that's you know that's the compound the, that's the beauty of the compounding effect that's right yeah no you're right i mean that's the crazy thing and it's honestly like right you hear those things like the wealthy keeps getting wealthier Right. It's, I mean, granted, a lot of them are doing stuff, but in the reality is once you keep pouring money and it keeps compounding like crazy, you, it's just, you don't do anything. It's just it's just, you know, putting the money in. Uh, right. So you're right. Like it's, it's weird. And, you know, of course, the opposite is true, too. Right. When the market tanks, you know, your net worth can drop 100 grand, you know, in one yeah. month, which is also scary. Right. But as long as you know, oh, this is a long play or you're young enough where you can recoup it, you're not going to be tapping it anytime soon. You know, it's not that, it's not that much of a, of a trouble. Uh, I remember one of your blog posts uh, that the market dropped and you just declare, oh, oh, oh my Lord, I lost X amount of money this month. Yeah, and it, like it looked like a huge number. Something. Yeah, it was the most I've ever, quote, lost in a month. It was like 60-something thousand. And here's the crazy part, right? That was like, I don't know, let's say six months ago. And now, like, we've surpassed that. So, so many people are emailing me, like, oh, I don't know. I'm losing money, too. I'm going to cash out. I'm going to cash out. I'm like, no. Like, that's the worst thing to do is cash out when it's crashing. Right. You know? And so, so a lot of people took out or switched to cash or switched to bonds. And then there was a rally. And all that yeah. money came back and then some. You yeah. know? And so, like, granted, like, I mean, you know, you could try timing things and people have their strategies and everything. I know for me, like, it's just like put the money in. You know, I don't look at it except for once a month to update the net worth. And then that's it. Like, I don't like I don't go around changing things all the time because I'm a very emotional person. And that is a dangerous slope to be on, you know. So. Yeah, I, I was a day trader at one time and I did it for a few years. And after I did my accounting, I didn't and I used to just read the news all the time and do all these charts and read all these reports. And that was my whole obsession. And after I analyzed my results, after a few years, I noticed that I was not beating the index. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just gave up. <laughs> I said, I'm not spending time with my friends. I'm not drinking beer. I'm just spending all this time looking at all these numbers. And, and at the end of the day, I'm not doing any better than so Jay Money, who's just indexing. So right, being lazy. That's right. Yeah, I'm yes. fine with average returns. I'll take average returns all day long. I don't need anything special. <laughs> right. Okay, so I have one more question. So it's been more than a year that I last spoke to you. Can you share with us what is your most popular blog post in the last 12 months? Oh, my gosh. I have no idea. Okay. One that you remember, <laughs> one memorable, well, one with sold... the more engagement or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go through my archives here. Um, 
Well, one that was really popular was when I sold Rockstar Finance. Probably when we were talking, I probably owned Rockstar Finance. Right, right, right yes. Yeah, and so that site was I basically since I read articles all the time and I you know I share them um, on my blog or to friends. I thought, well, I'm gonna share every day like my three favorite articles. Um, and so I did that. I just built Rockstar Finance, and that was the whole point: share other people's financial articles and spread spread traffic around. Right, uh, right. particularly new bloggers I liked. Um, and so I did that and it, it grew really well. Um, but you know, going back to time versus, you know, family life, money kind of stuff, you know, I was like, all right, I, I think I need to, I did everything I could do and I didn't want to spend more time on it. And so I sold it and that freed up about four hours a day of my time. It gave me, um, over a hundred thousand dollars, um, you know, to add to the net worth, which certainly, um, padded it some. Um, and then, you know, and then I had, yeah, just my lifestyle was more imbalanced. Um, and so that was a blog post that I had written. And I think, I think I was clever. I'm trying to think of the name of it. It was something like I fired, like why I fired myself from Rockstar Finance with the play on the fire word. I see. <laughs> I was uh, and actually, I think that just sold a couple months ago too. So whoever yep. else bought it, resold it, John. Um, I don't, I haven't, I haven't followed it because it's weird to follow your baby after, you know, you're not the, the runner of it anymore. Um, you know, but that was good. And that's the thing. I'm always constantly testing stuff. And I think the stuff that I experiment, anytime I'm blogging about, um, experiments that people usually like that because it, it gives people a, a the chance to experiment themselves. Right. Finds people that like, you're always testing stuff out. Like you're never usually like, all right, I've gotten everything lined up perfectly. Now I'm just going to do nothing else. Right. Um, and you do that in certain sections, like with investing, like I know I'm an index guy, so I put money in indexing, right? Like that part I'm fine with, but you know, you're, you're always getting new bills or, or, ch or changing salaries and stuff. And so you're always adjusting things. Um, and I like challenging myself, you know, again, with the weekends, no working on weekends anymore, right? Even no night working, you know, I, I hardly do anymore. Anything that I'm experimenting, something, you know, in the beginning, when I first started, I, I tried going, you know, 40 days without buying anything. Right. And that was a that was a mind boggling thing for me. I'd never done that my whole life. Right. And I learned a lot of things about myself that I didn't know. Um, and so I think like, you know, in just life in general, always experimenting and, and kind of challenging the stuff that, you know, you're so used to doing out of habit. You right. Know? But but we're different people. Like when we first start habits, we're different people later on once it gets going. Like I had an iPhone for like, I don't know, five or six years because everyone else had one. Right. And at the time that made sense. But after like five or six years, I realized I don't really care that it's an iPhone as long as it calls and takes pictures and does iPhone related stuff. And I switched to Android and I saved like a hundred bucks a month. You know? Yeah, I, that, uh, that I still cannot believe that, uh, uh, you know, most people use a phone just to text message. They hardly ever use it to make real phone calls, but they yeah. use it for uh, Facebook text message i don't know maybe it's on youtube and so all the phones do exactly the same thing yeah. and i don't i still don't understand why someone would be willing to pay a thousand dollars hard cash for this thing that they could just buy i don't know 100 dollars and do exactly the yeah. same thing well and i bet you most people don't think about like i didn't think about it i would just buy it and i'm like this is what i think is normal but then I'm like, well, what if, the, what could I be, and that was the thing, could I be, and with everything I do, for the most part, can I be equally as happy with this alternative, right, that would save me a ton of money, you know, um, and that, that simple questioning, at least for me, has really worked, because there's a lot of things, like, there's a lot of things that make me happy, the same amount of happiness, right, right. like, I was talking to someone, it must have been a couple months ago, where, like, I find a quarter on the ground, and I am so happy to find a quarter, and then that same day, I remember getting like a freelancing check for like 500 bucks writing an article for someone. I was happier with that quarter that I found for some reason than I was about the, the freelancing check because that was quote work, you know. Um, and so it's interesting to, to, to gauge your happiness when you're doing stuff. Um, and when I looked at my iPhone, I'm like, well, what would I rather have? Like once I knew the difference was around $100 that I'd be saving, I ended up switching to Republic Wireless. I said, well, what's better? Would I rather have... $100 cash in my hand every month along with this phone, which is an Android, which is perfectly fine, or uh, would I rather have my iPhone, right? And I took the one with the $100 cash, right? Like that, that yeah. every single month. And so, you know, I think that's been, I don't know, let's say four years, five years. 
I mean, that's thousands of dollars. <laughs> that's five yeah, that's yeah. to max out of a Roth IRA for free. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have a, a confession to make about frugality. So okay. one of my part-time jobs is to work as a photographer. Oh, cool. Uh, and as a photographer, I go to a lot of weddings and birthday parties and, and whatever. And one of my happiest moments in the job is not when I get the paycheck, but when they call the staff or whoever work in the party to go and eat for free in the buffet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I am a cool man. I, I, I have an appetite and I'm always eating and and to say this free food, you know <laughs> I can buy all the food that is there in the supermarket, but somehow I see it more valuable because it's free. Yeah, man, and that and that's the little things, right? That makes your quality of life better, you know. <sighs> that's awesome. Okay, well, Jay Money, I don't want to keep you much longer. I, I would like to ask you, yes, if you could share one resource with the audience, and this could be a book, a blog, YouTube channel, podcast, who your best friend, diary, whatever you want to share with us. Um, yeah, one of the blogs that I've loved over the years, um, and it's not finance related, although it does tap into it every now and but it's more like, I don't know, just thinky. Like now that I'm like almost turning 40, and I have kids, I'm, I'm thinking a lot, you know, about death and happiness and, and what's important and what's not. Um, and one of the guys I love is David Kane. He re- runs a site called raptitude.com. Um, and his tagline is literally like getting better at being human, you know? Okay. Um, yeah. And he really gets you to think. He really gets you to question why you do things. Um, and so that kind of really helps me step back and, you know, challenge some of the stuff I do you know, and whether I should keep doing it or not. Um, and I don't know, it always makes me, you know, just freeze time for a little bit and get inside my head, which I, which I really appreciate. Well, thank you so much. We will check it out. And finally, the last question is, of course, how can people find out more about you for that one or two person who don't know who you are? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you can go to budgetsaresexy.com um, or if you like Twitter, I love, you know, communicating there. It's at uh, budgetsaresexy. Uh, oh, actually, I have another site that I always forget about. It's jmoney.biz.biz, um, and that site, and it's just the letter J and then money. Um, and that's right. kind of like if you want a quick over, like that's my resume that I send to like journalists or something I'm trying to pitch. Like if you don't know who the hell I am or anything, go to this one page, and it gives you a quick like rundown of my whole story kind of thing. Um, right, right. Other projects. I'm Okay, man. Well, I hope uh, maybe a year from now I will ask you to do another catch-up interview to see where are you and to see how what are you doing with your million plus that you have in your account <laughs> by that time. I don't have another kid uh, then either. That <laughs> 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 would be a little too much. <laughs> well, man, thank you so much for sharing this time with us. All right, dude. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Once again, Jay Money, thank you so much for spending that time with us. And you can count that I'm going to call you again next year to see how does it feel to be a freshly minted millionaire. Now, moving on, I'd like to remind you that this Tuesday, June 25th, we will have our live interview with Taina DiNapoli at McGill Toastmasters. So if you are in the Montreal area, please pass by. Uh, say hello, come shake my hand, and listen to this amazing interview. Taina will share how she, after graduating from university, she, without any funds, have created a multi-million dollar coffee business. So come around and say hello and shake my hand. And finally, yeah, tell me, get in touch with me in social media, so, uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, especially LinkedIn, I like that one, uh, Instagram or Twitter. Just pass by, say hello and tell me what you like or don't like about the show. And until then, see you soon. Goodbye.